Hey guys, I'm Zach, and if you've been thinking about learning how to 3D model so you can get the most out of your 3D printer, you're in the right place. Because in this video, episode one of my 3D modeling on Fusion 360 series, I'm gonna break down the fundamentals of navigation and take a look at the different functions we have in the toolbar. So you don't get like lost in this expansive digital studio or workshop that is Fusion 360. I'm not gonna be modeling in this video. That will be for the upcoming episodes, linked down in the description. And if you already know your way around the Fusion 360 workspace, then you can probably skip this video right to episode two. But enough about that, let's get right into it. First thing I want to tell you guys is first I think it is vital to give credit where credit is due. I'm going to start out by telling you that at the time of filming this episode there is already an episode out about the extrude feature in Fusion 360 and this particular video is a response to an awesome suggestion I got in the comments from that episode so shout out to Robert for the idea and with that said Let's jump straight into our Fusion 360 workspace. The first thing I'm gonna cover is how to move around in this digital world. And we're gonna start off with your mouse. The scroll wheel is critical for this. By clicking down and holding the scroll wheel, it allows us to drag the workspace around, letting you keep a fixed camera angle on your model. And by holding down shift while we're doing this, it lets you change your view of the model, helping you understand it better in 3D space. Now let's take a short tour around our digital workshop. The first thing we see when we jump into Fusion is a large workspace space where we're going to model our part. A toolbar on the top which I'm going to go into in a minute, a history tree on the bottom left, and a little virtual navigation cube at the top right. And right in the center is the origin point which is a crucial piece of geometry. And with that out of the way, let's get into the main course of this video the toolbar. Let's start out with the right hand side of the toolbar. This is the creation section. The first tool we see here is the create sketch option. This is by far the most essential tool you need for designing your 3D model because almost everything you want to build has to start with a sketch when it comes to Fusion 360 and other CAD software. Once you open a 2D sketch on a sketch surface, the toolbar changes completely. If you guys want me to go more in depth into the sketch option toolbar in a separate episode, just let me know in the comments. For now, let's move on on to the extrude tool. This is another essential that lets you transform your 2D sketch into a 3D object in seconds by extruding it kind of like Play-Doh. The next tool in our digital workshop is also one of the essentials. This is the revolve tool. This lets you spin your sketch around the center axis, thereby creating a circular or cylindrical 3D object, kind of like a reverse lathe. Moving on, we have the hold tool. This is just what it sounds like. It's kind of like a drill and it kind of helps you well um, make holes. Next up we have the rectangular pattern tool. This is a powerful tool that lets you copy and paste features or solid bodies as many times as you like along specific axis. The next tool in our tool tray is the form tool. This one lets you pick a basic shape like a sphere or a rectangle and freeform it to create more organic designs. Under the main creator tools, there's a drop down menu loaded with options for creation. Aside from these tools I just showed you, the most essential tools in this menu I have found are sweep, which lets you guide a sketch along a rail, kind of like a train, forming a 3D shape like a branch. The loft tool that lets you knit 2D sketches on different planes together to blend them into one shape. This one is slightly more advanced. And the emboss feature, which I personally like very much, that lets you project a sketch onto a face on your model and well emboss it or deboss it right on there. The next section in our toolbar of creator goodies is the modify section and like the name suggests this is where all the modification options are located. It's kind of like where all your sandpaper and chisels are in relative terms. Once we have our basic model this is where we go to refine it and finish it up. So let's jump in. First up is the press and pull tool. This one lets you modify your model by dragging features to expand or attract them to meet your needs. Next up is is one of my favorites, the fillet tool, which lets you pick a corner or a face and chamfer or fill it to your heart's desire. Up next is the shell tool. This one lets you take your model and empty it out by leaving you with, well, a shell. Up next is the combine tool that lets you combine two separate bodies into one when they're touching. This is important because when you're making a 3D model digitally, the computer will keep separate bodies separate, even if it looks to us like they're one part. And this can cause an issue called zero thickness, which is super annoying. So making sure you keep track of your bodies is very important. And if you have two bodies, one inside the other, the combine tool can really help you out. The next tool on our list is the split body tool. This allows you to split a single 
single body into two separate pieces using a reference. The next section of the toolbar of greatness is the assembly option. These tools allow you to construct multi-part configurations. Next up we have the construct section. This is where you'll find reference geometry tools that will allow you to make sketch planes basically wherever you want. Next up, we have the inspect tab. This is where you have all your measurement tools. And next to that, we have the insert tab. This I find very valuable tool. It lets you insert reference pictures and other file types that help you get the job done. So this is a brief introduction into Fusion 360. My goal is to get this info out to as many people as possible because I personally think that 3D printing is an amazing tool. And without the knowledge to construct your own 3D models, I believe it really limits the power this technology provides you. So if you found value from this, please consider subscribing and liking the video so we can expand that knowledge. And don't forget to check out the rest of the series. If you like this one, you'll probably like this one next. Bye for now.